RMW Rock My World podcast. I'm Tony Fennell, and let me introduce you, as always, to my two co-hosts in Chicago. We've got Chuck Masek. How are you, buddy? I'm doing wonderful today. Excellente. And our boots on the ground in the UK is Mr. Mike Litson. How are you, Mike? Yeah, I'm excellent. Thanks. Right, we're going to get stuck in and rather quickly because we've got some news. All right, fellas, here we go. Well, the way we get our music is ever-changing, and following the huge rumors over the last few months, it's now a reality. Amazon has released its new Amazon Music HD tier, the highest resolution music in the world, probably, and that, of course, comes with a higher cost. The new Amazon Music HD service features a massive, you ready for this, boys, 50 million songs at CD quality. That's 44.1 kilohertz to you audio nuts, as well as several million that are available at 24-bit. And, Chuck, you can explain that for the uh, listening audience perhaps in a little bit. There is yet another part of this tier that features music with sample rates of up to 192 kilohertz. And, Chuck, that's that's the higher end, also yeah. known as... Uh, Right, right. We're not messing around there. That is ultra HD. And again, if you would please uh, explain to the listening audience in a moment. And that will be available actually at no additional charge, which you got to love that. As for the price of this new service, the new HD tier will cost you $12.99 if, a month if you're an Amazon Prime member and $14.99 a month for a non member. If you're a current Amazon Music subscriber, you can upgrade to the tier for an extra $5 a month. Oh, and if you fancy a dabble, there's also a free 90-day trial for the new service as well. What's massive here is that Amazon has beaten Apple to the punch on high resolution, even though Apple was requiring high-res masters for submission for the last eight years through its Mastered for iTunes program. What's interesting to me is that I can't really see a massive demand for high-res streams. Perhaps, yes, for classical music, but I don't know. Chuck, what do you think about this madness? I know you uh, signed up You signed I up signed the up weekend, for right? within an hour of seeing the news story. I mean... Uh, and? And, I, sir? It's, it sounds amazing. Really? It really does. I did an A-B comparison between a couple records, between iTunes streaming and the Amazon HD quality, and I was blown away. Well, we're not getting the wool pulled over our eyes, right? At all? Not at all. Not okay, at all. sorry, John. I mean, sorry, it, sounds, it sounds killer. I mean, the average person listening on their phone probably is not going to hear a difference. But me in my studio, like, it just, it was a really pleasant upgrade. Like, the mixes were wider. Mm. deeper bottom end was better um you know it's cd quality there's two levels of hd there's hd and then ultra hd right hd from my understanding is 16-bit wave files and then the ultra hd is 24-bit 24-bit so a couple of the records i listened to were ultra hd my last album for my project was up there in ultra HD. I didn't even realize I uploaded 24 bit files. Um, <laughs> that's great. It's cool. I think it's worth it. The price is not bad at all. I mean, I'm an Apple music user. I don't use Spotify. I think for 1299 a month, cause I'm a prime member. Yeah. It, it's kind of no brainer. Cause I'm paying. Well, I have a family plan that my son is on with Apple music and we pay 20, 20 or 24 a month yeah so i don't know if i'm gonna give my son this amazon hd not that it matters but i may just give him a spotify free account what what's always been interesting chuck about about mixing and, and you know that's that's been your gig for a long 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 time yes i've been in production but mixing was never really my bag the bottom line is you're sat there you and you've got let's let's face it when you do music mike you'll understand this obviously when you do music it's your baby and then you're handing your baby over to the babysitter, which is the, the, the guy who's going to mix it. And you've got to really hope that he takes care of, you, takes care of your kid, right? You really hope that. Yeah, it works dude, his nothing, ass off. There's nothing up. worse than it sounding amazing in the car. Well, ha well hang on, hang on. Then... This is it. This is it, Mike. You've worked for a month making sure that that single sounds fantastic. You've done it in, you've done it in Ultra HD. You're absolutely over the moon. It's 24-bit as well as 16-bit. It sounds great. And then you're listening to it on an MP3. Yeah. What a kick in the nuts. Sorry, Mike, you were going to say. Oh, yeah, well, this is kind of where I was going with it. Is It's like, I, I sh surely I'm probably a, a, a high mid-end user when it comes to music streaming, right? I mean, I'm not listening through, like, Chuck's setup, but, you know, I've got a decent pair of Sennheiser HDs. Um, you know, the, uh, I, I guess in the US it's probably about 400 bucks it comes out as. So, you know, you get a decent quality through those. It's not studio speakers. Most people don't have them. And here's the thing is, if I'm wandering down the street, 
which is probably when I'm listening to music most often if I'm not in the car, is I'm using a cheap pair of earbuds or something like that so that I can wrap them up and chuck them in my pocket. Hmm. It's it's useless for that. I, I mean, no, in the car. I mean, did they take a shot at title, which was always had high resolution yeah. audio option, or the rumor about a month ago was Apple was going to introduce high resolution audio streaming? So did Amazon say, "Screw it, let's beat them to the punch"? I mean, I, I think the average user is, is going to be somebody like me, somebody with a stereo system. I don't think the millennial younger crowd who listens on bluetooth speaker or, or their earbuds or whatever i really don't think they give a shit well they don't and again that, that was going back to the to the point earlier in the in the setup for this classical music i can absolutely see me, I, actually not me because sunday monday sunday mornings are mental with me with the kids but that's another story for another day but on a sunday morning sitting down with your cup of coffee and you got your biscuits or you've got your bagel if you're in uh, if you're in New York City, you've got Bagel and Lux, you sat down and you've got Handel or you've got Beethoven blaring at you. And it's absolutely beautiful, insane quality. I can see that. I can't see the kid walking down the street or Mike walking down the street going, you know something? I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling like this is really getting to me. This is this is the greatest thing. And again, because you're listening to you listen to the stuff on earbuds and the earbuds, are, they're not terrible, but it's not. They're it's awful. Not like, Bro. <laughs> well, there yeah, we go. You, don't, you, you, do, you but, don't want to spend like five hundred, you know, dollars on something that you're likely to lose or break the cable on in like. Or, you know, so, or someone's like, or someone's likely to steal. The big thing here again, Chuck, is that's where I'm going back to. All of that time and effort to make it sound like it's a, it's a wondrous piece of music gets whittled down into nothing and coming out into two little crappy speakers that are stuck in your ear. You know, it, I don't, I don't think it matters. Because at the end of the day, when you upload your music through the service, whether you're using TuneCore or DistroKid or, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, they require a WAV file. They require a high-res WAV file. You can't upload MP3s to those services. So right. those files are already there. So this is just Amazon saying, all right, bandwidth is big enough now that we can move higher data. Let's just open it up and turn it on. So, I, I mean... I think it's kind of a doesn't matter kind of scenario. I'll tell you one thing. This is definitely a, the last arrow shot into the heart of album sales because I buy CDs because of my business, because of you know being a mixer and I want to listen to stuff at the best resolution. And I normally rip it into my iTunes at Apple Lossless so it's at full full resolution. But now, I mean, and unless an album has like the most, like we talked about last week, podcast the most badass artwork i'm i'm probably not going to buy as many cds yeah and you, caveat, you, okay um, what if you live somewhere with um less than stellar wi-fi like or you want to you know stream on places that where the 4g is a little bit lacking like if i go back home i i you know it'll take me five minutes to watch 20 seconds of a youtube video at its lowest resolution i don't think this is going to function there and i don't think amazon CDs cares oh yeah I no. think it's they're just, they're just throwing themselves. it up there and they're just throwing it up there they're just like hey it's here let's use it yeah well, it's an un it was an untapped resource if you're saying obviously what you're saying is true that basically you're up you, you have to upload uh, high res files at the same time as, as as all the rest of the stuff it's actually sat there sitting there languishing doing nothing Correct. Let's, let, let's sweat the asset. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe they're trying to, I don't know, motivate more people. I mean, everybody's, you know, we're in this world now that, you know, the newest iPhone comes out, everybody has to go get it. The newest cool underwear comes out, everybody has to go get it. I think Amazon might be just trying to juice up subscribers by saying, here's another cool option for you guys. But I don't think it matters at, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think probably Jeff Bezos is probably hurting at this point. Sorry. Jeff. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I mean, I, I talk about, if I can do a, a slight move to the right here, Amazon has put out basically every single mom and pop music store in the world. You know that, oh, right? Yeah. Totally. I mean, all of these these mom and pop stores that sold banjos and, and halfway decent guitars and all the rest of it, they're gone. They are gone. Unless they own the building, 
unless they're in well, the building and they've just the first, got and they had stock for 200 years. The first, done. the first one, I have friends who own small music stores and the first, the first death knell March was guitar center. Yes, it was. But now they're hurting because of online ordering through Amazon. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like when I first moved to Manhattan late, late eighties and, uh, Sam Ash, one of the biggest stores, and it was a real famous, famous music store in Manhattan, second to none. The guitar center put those guys out. Now this, now this place was like a, a, a mecca for musicians. You know, Sam Ash also went online and they were like, we'll go, well, you know, we'll go punch for punch with you. You ain't going to win the big corporations. And funnily I mean, enough. they're hanging in. I don't know how. Yeah, but. exactly. Exactly. But you know, funny enough, the guitar center went, went into administration. I think they had to be dragged out. So, yeah, I mean, it was obviously so, coming. I mean, they killed all the bookstores as well. You know, it wasn't like this was um, that people didn't know that Amazon was going to pretty much step in and kill everything. Yeah, well, you know, dude, this happens every time. Maybe throw one at you, and you're you, you're both going to go, uh huh. I hope anyway. The drum machine. I mean, when the drum machine came out and I had one in my hands, I was like, all right, it doesn't drink. It doesn't take, try and take your girlfriend. <laughs> it doesn't cost any money. And I was like, and everybody's going, it's going to put drummers out of business. No, it's not. And no, it didn't. In fact, the drummers ended up sticking them on their drum kit and going, oh yeah, how about a bit of this? They started using cat pads, all the rest of it. I thought it was funny. Do you remember that Chuck when it all, when they very, very first came out? Oh yeah. Drummers are done. Fantastic. Yeah, that was. A, I remember that over because I'm a drummer, so I was like, "Oh, f sure. you." <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember that first Nine Inch Nails album when that came out, "Head Like a Hole" and all that sort of stuff. That was all straight machine based, and it was like, "That's it. These are the new albums." Yeah, drummers. but they, it was interesting with that record. My buddy Jeff played drums on the tour for that. Um, yeah, the late, the late Jeff. Um, he, uh, but they, he played along with the drum machine live so oh, well I, I i love that i mean to me to me that is that was the again back back to two worlds the drummers playing playing live on stage and they got a machine next to them and a lot of them would like just go and bang the hitting the cat starting it before before the advent of really really good sequences on stage and everything i was i i was lucky enough back in the early 80s to be right at I was really in the in amongst all of that programming stuff live, and I, what, one of the bands that I played in, I, I helped program a tour uh, with massive songs that were huge hits in England. Anyway, it was Ultravox, so I ended up doing <laughs> I ended up doing the whole tour with the keyboard player programming, and it was just insane because I was like, oh my god, the drummer's going to be playing with real drums and 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 the synthetic drums, and it was the sound was just incredible. You know, it was just, you got all the bottom end weight of 909 kits and all that sort of stuff. Massive amounts of weight plus a real kit. It was, when you get that right, it is unbelievable. Surely, Mike, you've I, done that, Mike, right? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I tend to use the SPDSX as much as uh, possible. What just the hell is that? What is that? It's the Roland um, kind of sampling box, basically, oh. uh, that you can just mount to the side of your kit rather than having to. I mean, my, I, I do tend to hybridize my kit if I can. Um, obviously, not everyone's got the setup where the if you're in a smaller um, venue, you know, the, the PA system can be a bit limited. So um, when when I can, I, I like to use it. So it's it's the basically if you look at the side mounted, you know, nine padded things that you can shove on the side of your kit, yeah. basically to you know to put all your loops and everything in, then. It's the only one you want to buy because if you compare it to like the Yamaha ones, they've got really limited um, file sizes that you can actually put onto them. And for some reason, it's only Roland that is actually functional. Um, and a lot of the cheaper models are just a total waste of time. It's interesting. I mean, I, Amazon, uh, going back to where we were, to, obviously, we, where we got, we got the drum machines. I mean, Amazon sells every <laughs> single every single piece of kit you can possibly want to get. I did Is not it? buy mine at Amazon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go, Chuck. Here's one for you. How long is it before Amazon says, you don't even need to go and see gigs anymore? We got them for you. We are now, gonna, we are now going to book a room. We're going to stick corn in it, and we're going to charge you fourteen ninety nine to move in. Come in, come and grab a seat watching corn. How long is that away? I'd say, you know, I think a lot of people have tried it. I'm not against it. I mean, ticket sales are down for mid to small size shows and especially local stuff, man. Yeah. It just, so I, 
I would think that people are still interested in seeing concerts. I think if somebody got it right, I mean, like we were talking about the whole VR thing in the last podcast. Yeah. If something was cool like that and somebody perfected it, I think it would be awesome. I don't, I, I don't know well, if they, Amazon's the company to do it though. I, I think don't know. that's something Apple would get right. They've got the Amazon have the infrastructure. That's the big thing here. I mean, Apple really, does too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You're right. But Apple also had the chance and Apple also had the chance to do the uh, ultra HD. They didn't. So uh, I think, right. I think it's just a case of, uh, I think it's a, they, whoever basically jumps on it first. And I think it's going to be one of those monsters. I don't think it'll be Spotify, but Amazon is so big. And, and obviously Apple is humongous. These two should duke it out at some point because that that's next. You know, it's like live mean, ex- people... they talked about live ex- executions for a while. <laughs> Do you remember that pay per view? They Plus, talked about um, that for a little bit. If you think bit. of Amazon and Twitch's connection, they kind of have the live streaming kind of elements set oh, up already. Oh, you're right. Good, good call. I mean, Twitch would definitely be. It could be interesting. I mean, I don't know if uh, you know their their heartbeat is gaming, but you know, eventually. They could add something new, and I see musicians on Twitch all the time. I'm on, I'm on. I mean, I have my own stream on Twitch, and you know, I see Brendan Yuri from, you know, Panic at a Twitch stream, and Matt Heffy got one, um, and they're playing music or whatever on there. I don't think it's taken off. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe Mixer, Microsoft streaming service, or Amazon. Somebody different than Twitch because Twitch is so gaming centric. Yeah, but if you did something kind of like um, BBC Live Lounge style, but streamed it out, you know what um, is that? I'm I'm not familiar. With oh, that. so <laughs> uh, so b- 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 <laughs> is this going to be the theme of the day? Ask Ask Mike what is this thing he's referencing? Well, I live in Chicago. I don't get BBC. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so basically they tend to bring in artists to play like acoustic covers of their own songs or of someone else's song, and you know then they whack it on a cd at the end of the year which they try and flog to everyone for christmas but uh you know it's always been a, a fixture on like the radio itself but um obviously because the bbc's got that pulling power it can bring people in but so can something like twitch you see do you see the irony there mike is that you're talking about and you're mentioning words like these are buzzwords here radio who the hell uses that anymore england does it's interesting <laughs> and only in the car it, only in the it, car it, I'm but thinking still. about what Mike just said right now. And the one thing, I don't know if this will ever happen because of the stronghold Live Nation has on live shows and owning the rights to those concerts. So, I mean, Live Nation would be the people to do it, but then that would hurt their ticket sales. So, I don't know. I, I The live thing is an interesting place. Nothing, nothing is out of bounds anymore, though, is it? No. If it's going to make money, we'll do it. I mean, it's got to be somebody with super deep pockets to be able to go to Muse or Metallica or a a, a stadium band and go. We want to do. We want to broadcast your shows because they can't just do one. They'd have to do the tour. I I I don't know. I I mean, it would have. You make it like a you know, it's sort of like a. You do it like a. I think you could just do one. Uh, I don't think any band would want every single one filmed. That's a lot of extra pressure. Well, I'm just saying somebody with deep pockets would have to cover cover the cost of their loss and then try to make it up with people people re- uh, renting the stream. Well, I mean, we show festivals on TV here, like you know, like Leeds, Reading, yeah, and stuff we don't get televised. We don't get a damn thing. I know I see Rock and Ring and, and all stuff in Germany is all live broadcast. We don't get any of that, man. America could give a flying fuck about live concerts because there's well, so they, many. Speaking in, of festivals, in, man, what in, was in the with, um, what, what was what was going on with the village people being at Riot Fest, man? That seemed a little that, incongruous. They're trying to diversify that thing. I mean, that's here in Chicago. It's an amazing event. Um, I no, mean, I they saw, sl- I saw Paul McCartney there. They went from Slayer to the Village People. I mean, that's the diversity that they're trying to do with that fest. Yeah, I'm I saw actually, uh, I saw mosh pits to Macho Man, and like uh, the Village People had a wall of death and things going on. It was a very, very strange thing. And I'm, anyone who wants to see it, it's on YouTube. Go look. I'm actually really good friends with the original Cowboy from Village People. And on to the next is um, thanks, cheers. Yeah, he's a really, really good mate of mine. And there's and just like in any good. Band infighting, just like Oasis, whatever it is. Oh, now they're fighting. 
They hate each other. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So the original cowboy is not the original cowboy. The original, I think it's the original cop that's the, uh, the singer now in The Village People. Either way, it's a good time. And they do the same thing, Mike, at, at baseball games. They do it at the Yankee Stadium. You ever seen that, Mike? You ever, I, I can't ever, say I have, man. Well, they'll do it. They'll do it on the seventh inning stretch. They'll do the why. Everybody's got their hands up. It's it's pretty. And these are the same baseball grounds where they I, and Chuck, you'll bear witness to this, where they where they burnt and smashed disco records. Remember that disco sucks. Oh yeah, it's so Steve Dahl. Yeah, so they basically what they did with Mike, and I'll tell you the truth here, they took all the records, they basically they put them onto the baseball field, smashed them and burnt them, and they were literally holding up signs saying "Disco sucks." It's absolutely. Yeah, it was brilliant. one of the one of the big uh, Chicago DJs from radio, Steve Dahl. He did that. Is that right? And, yeah, he put that whole thing on at Comiskey Park. That was crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. If I could just do a quick, um, a, a quick digression here. Uh, last week we had terrible news, obviously about uh, a couple of our rock star brothers dying. Some good news though this week, Chuck, about um, uh, Dave Mustaine and his throat cancer. Yes. Yeah, so, giving uh, him a pretty positive. Uh, the doctors are feeling pretty positive. Yeah, I think he just finished his last treatment, and they're feeling pretty good. You gotta love that man. I mean. One can only think. One can only think. Hey, listen, we 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 absolutely, absolutely wish you well. And I think they're going to do the uh, the mega cruise, right? I think that's on. Yeah. And the mega cruise, for those of you that don't know, is a cruise basically where you go and get pissed for three days listening to metal. Uh, and obviously, one of the <laughs> one of the biggest bands on there would be Megadeth. So, um, would you do that, Mike? Would you go on the cruise and have a drink? Uh, I mean, how much is it? Well, if you're asking, you shouldn't be going. Good God, sir! It's, it's <laughs> no. probably about it's probably about four hundred and fifty quid, something like that. I don't think it's yeah, no, that's think it's not massive. So, yeah, that's not too bad. But you add a flight to America, and all of a sudden, it starts to get a little bit more than I probably am uh, am up right. for spending on it. Um, I think it's like, it's like any of the others as well. By the way, Mike, you, you, it's you pay one price and you drink yourself to death, basically. That sounds all right. Um, I'm I'm uh, I'm sure I could get on board with that. I mean. Um, speaking of the people who've been uh, you know, a little worse for wear, did anybody actually see what happened with uh, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes? No, I did not. Um, Ter- terrible news, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I know they had to cancel the first week of the tour after um, what was basically described by everyone as horrific or horrible car accident. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if, if you know, Frank's all okay. Um, well, he, was say- he said that he was better than his friend who was less fortunate. They've been postponed six dates, New York, Baltimore, Philly, Louisville, Detroit, and Chicago. Because of course that was due to start today, uh, time of recording guys. So anyone listening, it may not be the 23rd when you hear this. <laughs> well, the other, the other, I mean, talking of car crashes, if I can, again, we don't want to get too, too, uh, too bogged down with this, but it is the truth of the matter. Country singer, um, Kylie Ray, uh, Carly Ray Harris, she died in a car crash last week. I mean, that girl was whoosh, not only an, an, an amazing looking woman, but a really kick ass, kick ass country singer. And she literally, I think she just sent out an Instagram post. She'd almost run out of gas, sent out a post saying, like, oh, God, please help me. You know, and she then she she then tweets again saying, um, I think she, it, was, it, was twi- it, it was Twitter or Instagram, one of the two. She then posts on social media again that she's like, we're all good. I've got gas. The next thing crash died wow Terrible. man Absolutely. i'm looking at the pictures of from frank carter's car holy cow man they are lucky to be alive oh yeah well, i know it said like 11 firefighters to cut them out didn't it so i mean this is you know serious serious stuff thank god they're okay that's all yep. i can say and uh and as for carly ray harris god bless you gal i mean three car pile up in whatever in new mexico in the middle of nowhere good lord terrible 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 tragic news tragic news can somebody tell me a good story now <laughs> you know it was swing swinging back to what mike brought up about the village the village people at riot fest it's funny that they they had a actual uh where we put a story up about who had the best mosh pit blink slayer or village people like what's happened to mosh pits <laughs> that we have village people and blink 182 in there well, all the people that used to do them are old now, you see. That's now true. They can't. 
Right, they're just looking for a good time, so it's like there's uh, not a, there's not enough room for wheelchair mosh pit. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. All right, well, <laughs> uh, right, I guess it's been one of the big story, hasn't there? Um, can I, Chuck, you shared this uh, shared with us today. The, the, the Stairway to Heaven trial has reopened. You know, I don't. Is it the same one or is it keep going? Same one. It's, it's, tor- well, it's, it's, it's Taurus in spirit still. Well, here's uh, the problem. The, the problem with that, and and if I could just quickly, uh, quickly throw my two p in, and I'll be quiet. The problem with that is this: is that Page really doesn't have a leg to stand on. I mean, money does talk here because Zeppelin were opening up for Spirit. That was the that was the problem here. They were opening up for him in the U.S., so he would have heard Taurus every night, whether it was in soundcheck or whether it was on on stage. I, it's quite obvious that whether he did it on purpose or it's subliminally, it stuck in Paige's mind, you know, and, and, it, and, and somebody of his talent, it wouldn't take him very long to work out those chords. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to look at him in the eye and say, I know you robbed him, but let's face facts. God, I mean, it's getting kind of crazy with all the lawsuit stuff. I mean, in the amount of money people are playing, like the, uh, what was it? An Oh four usher, Malfoy, he won forty-four point three million. The Dan Marino, the songwriter, won because yeah. he didn't get credit from the Usher track. And then I don't even can't keep track of how many people are suing Taylor Swift and oh, Taylor these. Swift. Taylor Swift's a newbie, mate. What about Ed Sheeran? Everybody and his dog. Even she- Ed Sheeran suing Ed Sheeran. He looks himself in the mirror <laughs> in the morning. Goes, didn't you rip me up last night? No. Um, he, I mean, he got he gets yeah, he got one. nailed. Yeah, I would say didn't he get nailed a couple times on that? Oh yeah, and he's he's up again. So it's it is a never ending story with him. I mean, it it goes obviously the Marvin Gaye estate goes after everybody nowadays. So um, you have to be very very careful of what you're listening to and how you interpret it musically. I know, but I mean, yeah. with the with with Taurus and, and Spirit, like they still haven't actually won this though. That's the thing is, I'm amazed that they haven't won yet. Well, the one thing I I read about this case is they cannot in the circuit court they're in they cannot play the music they have to fight it out over um the the judicial and the law part of it but they cannot play the music for them to listen to the differences right it's exactly i think cool. that's maybe why this is taking so long yeah because if you're showing a load of random people who don't know music some notes on some paper it's it's not going to be as obvious as it is if you compare the two like the first time somebody showed me this, and this is years ago, I was like, y- "Yeah, they they nicked that." Especially yeah. when you turn around and say they toured together, it's just like, y- yeah, "Oh yeah, come on." I mean, they're, they're saying last week the Ninth District Court turned down your, the request to play portions of Taurus, which is the song they're saying it was "Stairway yeah. to Heaven." For the judge at Monday's argument, what impact will this have on the case? Nothing. Generally, oral arguments in the Ninth Circuit Ninth Circuit will not allow audio or video visual exhibits to be played they want to stay focused on the legal issues instead you have to submit a record of the audio exhibits or whether you intend to offer as part of an appellate record so uh, that's as mike as the- mike just said though chuck i mean I, I, that's basically bump for you you ain't listening to it so it, it, it it's really down to the best lawyer at that point it's your best closing argument you know Ze- zeppelin I've, I've got the best guys in the business obviously and they've and got always, their natural wrong. brand recognition as well because everyone's going to go zeppelin are geniuses they wouldn't have stolen that taurus are obviously one you know that's that's the that's unfortunately good you know going to keep going against spirit is that because everyone knows who Zeppelin is, and no well, one knows guy, who they are. The guy who's suing isn't—he's passed away, didn't he? And it's his estate. It's his estate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sadder, you know. Uh, it's good. It's all—it's all nuts. And and again, money talks every single time. You know, you do not have to be a brain surgeon to uh, to put those two put those two pieces of music on and to go that's slightly similar, and then go. What do you mean they opened up for them on tour? Come on, please. Two yeah. and two make two and two make nine, right there. Come on. I mean, it's it's it, it, it's quite obvious. We'll have yeah, to sit and, and you know, you, like like you said, you maybe he spent half the tour wasted and doesn't you know quite realize that he nicked it, and maybe it came to him as an earworm at some point, and he just went, oh, that sounds like a great thing. 
Well, that's quite uh, certainly possible. That's, Mike, that's very presumptuous of you, thinking rock stars would go out and get drunk and do drugs in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> oh, I forget. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and, you know, we've, we've all done it. We've all gone, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's someone else's song. Bollocks. <laughs> that's because there's only so many notes that you can possibly use, and eventually at some point they come together. That's why you cannot copyright a chord progression, because... Oh. There's only 12 notes. That's you right. Know, at some point, they're going to, you know, rub up against each other. And Jesus, listen to a pop up band. They rip themselves off in every album. The whole <laughs> album. Coming. It's everywhere. <laughs> well, you know? just just take the first seven Nickelback albums and play the first one. And then, oh, sorry. No, I'll stop. Now. <laughs> That's, That's a cheap another. shot. It's too easy, yeah. isn't it? It was, it was too easy. And I had to take it. Guys, I think at this point, we'll call it. We've got plenty more to talk about. You guys have to keep listening to us, though. As always, thanks for listening today. Do us a favor, please. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our podcast. And you can catch all of our episodes on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Intune Radio, Stitcher, and, of course, our YouTube channel. Till next time, people. Chuck, Mike, see ya. 